All right, well, looks like it's noon, so we can, we can get started. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Jessica Duez. I am the Visitor Services Intern at Ottawa National Wildlife Refuge, sponsored by Friends of Ottawa National Wildlife Refuge. We are a 501c3 nonprofit established in 1997 to support Ohio's only National Wildlife Refuge complex with youth development, public use projects, and most recently, land acquisition and restoration. We are located along the southern shore of Lake Erie near Oak Harbor and some of the most critical wetland habitats in the world. If you are interested in learning more about us and what we do, I will add a link in the chat right now. Uh, this link will point you in the right direction to become a member, make a tax deductible donation to support our work, or even shop our online nature store. Today, I'm joined by Logan Sauer. Logan Sauer is currently a park manager park ranger at Minnesota Valley National Wildlife Refuge. He studied wildlife ecology at the University of Maine, then moved on to several visitor services internships at Ottawa National Wildlife Refuge in Ohio, Potomac River National Wildlife Refuge in Virginia, and Northern Maine National Wildlife Refuge. He enjoys being outdoors, painting, and graphic design. While, he's not, uh, while he has not pursued art as a career, he still gets to incorporate it into his work as a park ranger. His artwork is mainly focused on wildlife and he enjoys putting on painting programs to connect people to nature through art. He has so graciously joined us today to share his virtual paint session with us. Uh, before we begin, he'd like to ask that you stay muted to minimize the background noise, but if you have any questions throughout the program, you can unmute yourself and ask that way or type it in the chat and I will ask during the program. So now I will turn it over to Logan to get started. Hi everyone, thank you for having me. Um, yeah, my name is Logan, park ranger at Minnesota Valley. Um, so before we get started, I'll go over a few of the materials that we'll be using. Um, so let me share my other screen. So we're going to be doing, you're going to be seeing the painting from above. Um, you won't see um, my face, or maybe you will see my face at the same time. I'm not sure. So let me share my screen. Okay, can you see the painting or the canvas? Okay. Yes, we can. Put it in full screen. Okay, awesome. So I have my big brush that we're gonna use to make the background. I have a smaller square brush, a big round brush, and a smaller round brush. And I'll tell you which ones that I'm using um, at any given time. I have my canvas, and like I said, you can use any canvas that you want um, and adjust, this, adjust the painting as needed. And I'll be using red, blue, black, and white acrylic paint. And we'll be mixing the colors. And I'll let you know when I'm doing that as well. And you'll see it on my palette over here um, during the painting. OK. Is everyone ready to get started? I hope so. <laughs> I am ready. Okay, so first I'm going to be using the blue paint and we're going to be making a light blue. So I'm just using a pea size amount of the blue that I have and mixing the white. So this is the kind of blue that I'm getting. And then what we're gonna do is go along the top and then also the bottom. So you wanna imagine that um, my canvas is split in fours 
And then also along the horizon, the canvas will be split in fours as well. So we're gonna do the top and the bottom, just filled with blue. And you're gonna wanna use the paint strokes um, only horizontally. So never go vertical like this, only horizontal strokes. And then as you get to filling a fourth of that space, then you can start feathering it out at the bottom, kind of like this. Because then we'll use this feathering effect to blend it in with the next color that we're gonna use. So then same thing for the bottom. And I'm just adding a little bit of water to the rest of the paint that I have, and it'll kind of make it spread a little bit easier as I get to the feathered edge. Logan, do you like to paint the sides of the canvas? Um, I, it depends on, so after I'm done with this painting, I will most likely just take it out of the canvas and then just cut it to size. I don't usually keep it, um, cause that's what most people don't know, but the, um, the canvas that it comes in with these wood planks, it's just meant to spread the canvas apart. Um, so you get a nice clean and tight surface. And then after your painting is done, you're supposed to take it out of the wood plank or you're supposed to take the wood planks out and then you just cut it to size for the frame that you're gonna be putting it in. So it's up to you whether you wanna paint the sides or not. Okay, so this is what mine looks like so far. And now, let's see, we're gonna go, I'm gonna add a little bit more white and we're gonna kind of make like a baby blue. So even lighter than that blue. We might be able to just, yeah, we can use the same paint leftover and just make this baby blue and this will help us also blend into the next color and we're just gonna add this right below 
the blue we just did. And I'm using the, the short side of this brush to make these kind of skinny strokes instead of going this way, go this way. And then I'll do the same thing at the bottom. And we're gonna kind of let that dry a little bit and then we'll go back in and feather it out. Okay, so now I'll go back up here and kind of just help the light blue and the dark blue blend in a little bit. And I'll do the same thing down here. Hey, Logan, I don't see your screen anymore. Where did he go? It looks like he got kicked off. Uh-oh. Let me see if uh, I can message him. It should just take a few minutes and they'll put him back on. Sorry about that, everybody. Give us some time to catch up and let the paint dry a little bit. There he is. Sorry about that. My internet goes out sometimes. <laughs> That's OK. OK, back to where we were. <laughs> Okay. All right. So what I was doing, I was just spreading out 
these lines to make them not so arched. And just using the wider side of the brush to do that. Okay, now I'm gonna go in directly with the white. So I'm gonna wipe off, I'm gonna wash my brush off in my water that I have and then dry the brush off. Try and get as much blue off as you can. And then I'll grab my white. A little pea-sized amount on there. And then just go in directly underneath. And it will take some of that blue as well. That's kind of what we want. My cat wants to paint too. Same with the bottom. A little bit more white.
and I'm just using a little bit of water and the paint I have on my brush to help these two blend a little bit better. And I'm gonna just overlay it real quick and then just let it dry. And then once we go over it again, it'll blend it. How's everyone doing? Good. I'm good. I'm doing good. Okay. And then now I'm just using the bigger side of this brush and just going along it horizontally. Okay, and then now we're gonna make, oh, we're gonna make a pink. So I'm gonna take my red and white. You'll probably need a little less red than the white. I would just add a little bit to the white at a time until you get a nice pink color. Oh, whoops, that's black. Um, Look, did you want to clean your brush off with the blue? Yeah, I would. It doesn't look like mine's too bad. Still coming out pink. Okay, so this is the pink that I've made. Okay, and then I'm gonna go right underneath that light blue that we just made. And basically, we're just gonna fill in this whole other white space. I'm going to add a little bit more red 
just in the middle. Like that. And we'll blend this out as well. Okay, now that I have my red line in between the pink, we can just go ahead and buff those out so they blend. And adding a little bit of water to your brush might help to that pink that we made. Just use that to blend it all together. Logan, do you want to have all the canvas texture filled in? Um, yes, your whole canvas should be filled in. Okay, so it fills in like the little texture between the weave of the cloth? Yes. My cat is watching every brush stroke. <laughs> kind of daunting. He wants to attack the brush. Okay, and then now we're going to blend the two, the light blue and the pink that we just made. So I'm going to try and get off as much paint off of my brush. but still leave like a little bit on. And then you'll just take like some of the water that you have. And then you can add these strokes like this. And then once they dry a little bit, it will be easier to blend it out. And we can add some up here. It'll look cool once we blend it out. And then same thing underneath. And so this is the sky, and then our horizon line is going to be in between here. And then this is water reflecting on the sky. So you kind of want it to sort of be the same as the top. That's pretty good. OK. And then I will dry my brush as much as possible again. And then we'll go in at the top. And I think I'm going to use a little bit of the white as well, just a tiny bit of white to help me blend this out. I'm mixing it with the a little bit of the pink and a little bit of water.
going to add a little bit more white. I don't want to have too much on my brush. All right, how's everyone doing now? Good. Okay, I'm gonna go in and do the same thing at the bottom part, just blending it out with the lighter pink.
Okay, so this is what mine looks like so far. Is everyone sort of on the right track? Anyone need help? Looking good. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go in, I'm going to use black. I've kind of taken up all the space on my palette. <laughs> but I'll just put it down here. And I'm going to be using my small round brush. And I'm just going to coat it in the black and not get too much paint on there. But I kind of want to make it pointed a little bit like that. And we're going to make a horizon line pretty much in the middle of this. So try and make your black line as straight as possible. Um, but don't worry too much about it because we can fix it later. So I'm going to go across. And you just want to make it pretty thin because we're going to build off of this later. And that's why it's not too bad if you don't make it straight. See, even mine's not that great, so, but we can fix that later. Okay, so now that you have your black horizon line, this is where we're gonna kind of put trees in the distance. So how I do that is just, you take the same brush and you just kind of dab it on your palette. So it has like all of its bristles out or spread apart. And then I'm gonna kind of just dot a horizon of trees like this. And you want to make them uneven because not every tree is the same height. But these are pretty much in the far distance, so you can't really tell. Um, you can't tell the details.
and we're going to go all the way across. Okay. Okay, how's everyone doing after that part? Now I'm gonna take some of my black and mix it with some water. And then I'm gonna dry my brush off just a little bit because I don't want too much paint on there, but we're gonna go in at the very bottom and kind of make a feathered shadowy effect. And you'll probably need a little bit more water than you are paint on your brush. Okay, so that's what mine looks like so far. Just a feathered edge underneath the horizon tree line. Does anyone have any questions so far? Okay, I'll move on. 
So now I'm going to work on the vegetation that's going to be going on the bottom. And so I'll use the same brush, the same small round brush, and we're going to be just creating some wetland vegetation. So again, I'm getting my getting some paint on my brush, but also kind of making my brush thin by just patting it down and brushing paint on. And it kind of just makes the brush really thin like this. And we're gonna use that thin side to make the stalks of our vegetation. So I'm gonna go vertical. Okay, so there's my stack, and then we're going to create this kind of cone shaped feathery effect on just the top of it. Like that. And you're just going to make a bunch of those. Logan, do you brace your hand on the edge of the painting? Uh, what was that? Do you brace your hand on the edge of the painting? Oh, like how I'm doing it like this right now? My hand is on the, the edge of the painting, where the wood is. Oh yeah, thank you. And you can add a little bit of water to your black so that it drags easy and doesn't have like a break in the line that you're trying to make.
and you can add as much um, of the vegetation as you want going, you know, horizontally. You can go further out. Um, and then I'm just going to create one last stock here. Just depends on how much room you have on your on your canvas. And then in between each grass, I'm gonna just add some stocks, but I'm not gonna put these feathered tops on them. So I'm just gonna go up like this. And then you can add some longer leaves to them. This, and then they can go like every which way pretty much because this is gonna get dense vegetation over here. When you can, can you show, can you, Try and move your hand a little bit just to show how you're doing the tops of the feathers while oh, you're yeah. drawing them. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, let me see. I'll add another one over here. Okay, so then you start with like the base on the top. Like that. And like that. And then you just build off of that. Like that. And then right now I'm just kind of adding some like crisscross leaves in the mix. And then as we come up on the end, so towards the bottom, it's going to be a lot denser and thick. So I'm just going to use the black to kind of color it in and vertical strokes going upwards.
We don't want to go all the way. So that's what mine looks like so far. And then I'm going to go over to the other side where we haven't done anything yet. And we're kind of going to make, let's see, I'm going to do a black line right about here. We're just going to do some regular graphs off of that. Um, this would, um, adding water to your black would help during this part just to have like clean grass upwards brush strokes. And I'm just going different directions with the grass to make it um, look more like grass, I guess. <laughs> and then as I get to the end, going more inwards to the painting, my grass is going to get a little bit smaller. And then once you get to the base, remember um, it's going to be a little bit more dense, so we're just going to color it in with the black. Okay, and then that's what mine looks like so far. And then we're going to do the same thing as we did for the horizon, and we're just going to add um, like a shadow underneath. So we take a little bit of black and that water.
Okay, so that's what mine looks like so far. Any questions? None? Okay. So now is the tricky part. And you can you can opt out of this part if you wish. Um, but I'm gonna make a nice great blue heron in the middle here. And you can watch me beforehand um, so you can see what it's gonna look like. Are, are you rinsing your brush? Uh, no, I still have the black paint. We're just going to make kind of like a silhouette. So we're going to start off with the beak. And you want to make, make it small at first because you can always build off of it, but you can't take away the black paint. Would it be, would it work to sketch this in with pencil? Yes, I would probably recommend that. And then now I'll go down to the neck and I kind of got like a backwards S shaped neck. And again, I'm kind of starting it small so that I can build off of it. And then they kind of have like a wispy feather coming off of the back of their head. That. And then I'll start making the body. And then all those feathers are just going to make a point at the end and meet together like that. And then we'll just add some thin legs in there. And we don't have to show the feet because they're going to be underwater. And then we'll do the same thing and create a shadow underneath using the water and black. And I'm just going to create these little lines for a shadow. And 
like that. And so once that's done, that is pretty much it for the painting. Um, and then here you can add as much vegetation as you want. Um, I might go in and add some trees towards the edges. How's everyone's looking? Not terrible. Not as good as yours, <laughs> but not terrible. So a resemblance of a wetland. <laughs> All right. Are we done, Logan? Is that yeah, are you pretty much. What was that? Do you have any more to show us? Anything else? Um, I don't think so. You can add some birds in the sky if you want. Some, you know, those little M-shaped ones that people do. I like those. Maybe do a nice little flock coming from. So it's kind of small. Is each bird kind of a V shape? Yeah. Okay. Well, does anybody have any questions for Logan? We did go over a little bit, but I think that's okay. I think we had a good time. Anyone want to show theirs? I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Is that if that's okay? <laughs> sure, I'll show mine. I don't know if you can see it. Thank you, Logan. That was really fun. Anybody else have anything else they'd like to add? Well, yeah, we did lose him again. <laughs> well, we can wait and see if he'll come back on so I can thank him. I, I really like the uh, addition of the birds. Yeah, I do too. Can I see yours? Can you show me or? Oh yeah, it's, it's Diane here. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Colors. You wanna um leave it up and then I don't know, can we take a screenshot? Um I am not gonna do that. Or awesome. we can also see if people will want to share it on the friends yeah. of the National Wildlife um photo club Facebook page. You can take a picture and maybe put it on there so we can also see them too. Yeah, I would take maybe a nice picture of your photo and send it to the friend's email. And then um, we can just put them all in a collage because I would definitely like to compile them and see how everyone's turned out. 
So um, the video, it was recorded. So you should get an email in either later today or probably tomorrow with the recording. So you can rewatch it if you'd like. Great, thank you. Yep. All right. Um, and then before I go, I will just add a couple more links to the chat if you guys want to see what upcoming what upcoming programs we have. And then also we have a survey here to take to let us know how we did. And if you do the survey, you'll get a special coupon code for the Rookery Nature Store. All right. I'll leave that up for a second just so people have time to get that. Thank you, Diane. You're welcome. All right. Well, thank you, Logan, for uh, showing us, doing this virtual paint with us. And thank you, everybody, for coming. And I can't wait to see, hopefully, your pictures of your paintings um, soon. So I hope everybody has a great week. Uh, and thank you for coming. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Bye.